Happy Mardi Gras. You too, and let's do a big spin for the cameras. I just remember being in bed and desperately wanting to go to the parade and having friends do whatever they could to try and revive me and to get me out, and none of it worked. I was so seriously ill. And I remember going to the doctor's surgery, you know, wobbly in the legs, frightened, sitting for half an hour or more in the waiting room. I could kind of tell from his silence that he didn't want to tell me. And I quizzed him and quizzed him, and he obviously realised that I was desperate to know the information. He basically said, look, I'm sorry to tell you, but your results have come back positive. And it was just like the image I had or the, the feeling I felt was a spear gun that went right through my heart. The information that was coming out was that, you know, I'd be dead within a few years. And that not only would you die, but you would die an ugly death. So you would be covered in all these black cancers called Carposi sarcoma. You would become emaciated and you would die a harrowing, lonely death as people judged you. If you compare that to someone who has cancer or you compare it to that to someone who has any other illness, those people are often, and back then especially, innocent victims. I was a dirty fag that deserved it. Drugs that started to work, but then don't. Side effects that got too much. Going back to my young days when I was at school, I was like, oh, how old will you be in 2000? There was all that excitement about how old you'd be. And of course, 36 seemed so terribly old back then. Uh, but yet it seemed so terribly old again in the new context of having an HIV diagnosis. It's like, will I make it? I took it as a challenge. I just turned it around and thought, fuck you, I'm gonna fight you and I'm gonna fight you till I can. He decided he would come out as an HIV positive man so that subsequent uh, victims of the disease would not have to suffer the way he did. <laughs> 